Well, I thought I'd do another video since it's been a while here. Uh, I wanted to cover this, well, new to me instrument. It's an HP 8901B modulation analyzer. I've been looking for one of these for a while. I, uh, uh, over the years, I've just been kind of looking at these things and uh, I never really uh, could find one that was, <laughs> that I thought was within a reasonable price range. But I stumbled across this thing. It uh been on eBay for a while. So I uh, just basically asked the guy a few questions, and I went ahead and purchased it. And it arrived here yesterday. But uh, I had to do a couple of things. I had to clean it out because it was, even though it had been tested and was uh, sold as working, uh, there was an awful lot of dust bunnies inside of it. I also had to uh, replace the uh, the cooling fan. It worked, but the bearings were bad in it, and it just made a lot of noise. So fortunately, I was able to go to the uh, local electronics store and actually find a fan that was the right size and moved the right amount of air. So now the things whisper quiet. But anyhow, I uh, like I said, I've been wanting one of these for a long time. I've... Uh, Needed something that I could do uh, phase modulation measurements, uh, FM deviation, and AM depth uh, measurements, as well as uh, distortion uh, measurements. But uh, essentially, this thing is also a, a power meter. It uh, will accept the HP uh, uh, power sensors for you know, like the uh, the the. the uh, Oh, the 437B power meter. Uh, you can do. Uh, you can also uh, insert audio and do sign ad measurements, which is kind of nice. Uh, here lately, I've just been doing all those manually, and now I've got an instrument that I can actually make them direct. It's got a number of features, uh, such as uh, measuring the peaks, the positive and negative peaks of your modulation, it's peak hold, averaging ratios. It's uh, got pretty much everything a bunch of uh, uh, filters that you can use high pass and low pass it's got uh, FMD emphasis controls and it's got a, uh, a couple of uh, calibration outputs it's got one for the power sensor and another one to set and check the uh, AM and FM uh, modulation uh, calibrations and of course, it's all HPIB uh, compatible. I've already gone through and uh, tested it a few times on HPIB. It seems to work just fine. So, with all this said, let me uh, hook up this thing to the signal generator and we'll uh, step through a few tests. Now, since I'm still uh, learning how to use this instrument, I'll just go through some of the basics. So, when you fir first turn the instrument on, it comes up into this condition here which is basically uh, called instrument preset and now I will turn my signal generator on and it automatically searches and locks on to the frequency the next thing we can do is we can also measure the power level we currently got going into the instrument just by pressing power and initially it comes up in watts, but you can change that by pressing the log, uh, the log button. And now we're showing that I have the, uh, the signal going to is about minus 10 dB. And it's a little loss here from this cable. It's kind of long. And uh, it's got a few connectors in it, so we're getting some insertion loss. And uh, since I'm modulating this frequency modulating the signal we can go to FM and it will show our current deviation we can uh, also by pressing this button and the AM button we can show the audio frequency that's being uh, that's being received and if we press this button again here and the FM button we can now go to the, uh, uh, the audio uh, distortion uh, uh, measurement and we can either have it in a, uh, a DB format or pressing this button again we can have it in percentage format so 
as of right now, we got about a little over 0.6% distortion in this uh, 1 kilohertz audio tone. And you can also select between 1 kilohertz and there's a 400 hertz. So you can uh, uh, measure both if you like, if you're doing a two-tone measurement. You can measure each one individually. Also, uh, I don't have it set up right now, but we can do uh, uh, phase, mod phase modulation measurements. And uh, then we got a whole bunch of other uh, features down here for the detector. We can uh, show the, uh, the peak of the, uh, of the plus side and the peak of the negative side. We can do a peak hold, average, ratio, all kinds of stuff. So now I will change over to, let's go back to frequency here. And... I will turn off the FM, and we will turn on some AM modulation. So now we can go over to AM, and we're showing about 30% modulation depth. And the same thing, we can uh, show the audio frequency that's being transmitted. This is a 1 kilohertz, or modulated, excuse me, 1 kilohertz. And we can do the same thing, we can check for the distortion. And it's actually a little bit better. Uh, so, 0.22% distortion. That's not bad. And uh, we can also do sine measurements with this instrument. It uh, requires a special function here. So we go, let's see, let's go back to AM. And let's go 29.0 special. And press this button here. And we're showing 53 dB of cyanad. But uh, we're also feeding it with a pretty strong signal, minus 10 dBm. So, uh, and this is just using the internal receiver. We can also make cyanad measurements using the external audio input, and uh, we'll do that one next. Okay, now to do a cyanad measurement using an external audio source. I have a 2-meter uh, rig sitting here off-camera. It's a Yesu, it's a very old Yesu uh, 227RA memorizer. Uh, I'm currently sending a signal at uh, 147 megahertz. It's uh, being, there's a, a 1 kilohertz tone being modulated at 3 kilohertz deviation. And we're sending the signal levels at 0.1 microvolts, way, way down there. So now, in order to measure this, we connect it to the external audio input. We go to AM, and then we enter the, the magic code, 29.0 special. And now, at uh, 0.1 microvolts, we have about a 5 dB sign at. So, we can increase the, uh, the output. Let's see here. Change amplitude to, let's say, uh, 0.15 microvolts. And now we've jumped up to about 9 to 10 or so uh, dB of cyanide. Well, that's still pretty close, but uh, uh, not quite close enough. So let's jump it up to, let's say, uh, 0.2 microvolts. Okay, now we're up there around what is expected to be normal. So even at uh, point 0.2, that's still pretty good, I think. You now, about, what, 15, 13 to 15 dB. It's jumping around a little bit because there's so much noise in the signal. So, yeah, I mean, uh, before I was making all these cyanide measurements manually using a uh, separate uh, notch filter and using a... Uh, an AC RMS voltmeter. This is certainly a little bit easier uh, as far as setup wise. So probably from here on out anytime I do a cyanide measurement I will more than likely use this instrument instead. <laughs> so, this is going to make life a lot easier. I, uh, a lot of these functions are included in uh, a number of uh, communications analyzers. But even those, even on the used market if you want to find one that's in decent condition, you're going to have to pay, you know, more than a thousand dollars for. 
with this instrument I paid oh, about 300 some just under 400 bucks but it came to you know 400 bucks of shipping and tax and all that junk but anyway I think uh, once I get to know this instrument a little bit better I may uh, in future videos cover a little bit more in detail uh, how some of the special functions work because there's a lot of them uh, just one of the manuals that I have for this thing is you know, 433 pages long. It's pretty, uh, uh, you know, it's, you know, pretty expansive. So, but anyway, I figured I would uh, just whip this little video out here real quick. And uh, let's see here. Uh, but anyways, yeah, I'm just spacing it here. So it's time to, uh, I think, call it a, an evening here. So. Hope this, uh, you know, video was entertaining to say the least. Uh, but uh, yeah, if you want uh, a modulation analyzer, this is probably a good start. It's, you know, you just got to you know, search around, find one that's been cleaned. This one, like I said, was pretty dirty on the inside when I got it, but it was fully functional. As far as I can tell, it's working just fine. And it's, and it's, it's actually uh, seems to be still within calibration. Anyway, that's it for now. I'll see you guys next time.